The gold-silver ratio, it's a really interesting metric and barometer of which metal is perhaps the better one to get into if you are brand new to stacking. There's a lot of evidence to say that silver and a lot of buzz about silver is the better metal right now. But the ratio is very much in favor of buying gold. So where do we go? What do we do and what decisions do we make? I hope to some degree that this video will help your understanding of the gold-silver ratio as it stands right now and your decisions around which of these wonderful metals to invest in. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a very warm welcome to you all joining me for another thought-provoking video about precious metals. And there's been a lot of buzz about silver in the last couple of weeks, about how good silver is and how undervalued silver is and how it could shoot the moon and the silver squeezes and all of that. But actually, from my perspective, I want to present a bit of an argument today about why actually gold is better right now to buy, or theoretically should be. And we have been monitoring the gold-silver ratio as a community, as a group of stackers for a very long time. And I know on my tenure here on YouTube, it has been a barometer of what metal is perhaps better to buy at any given time in a market scenario. And I've noticed that that's kind of being ignored somewhat uh, at the moment. There is most certainly a uh, shift towards silver. Now, I can understand that with the sentiment that's going on out there at the moment with uh, the silver squeeze and the physical kind of demand issues that are almost out there from the dealers right now. And there's this sentiment out there that silver is drastically undervalued and it's going to go up significantly over time. Well, yes, that is definitely true. And that is, in my opinion, potentially quite likely. But if we look back over the last couple of months and year, uh, back to March last year, when silver had a dramatic drop off the cliff moment when pretty much most of the world was going into full on lockdowns. The gold to silver ratio went up to over 120 ounces of silver to one ounce of gold. Now, for those who are perhaps new to silver and gold and don't really know what we are talking about here when we say to the gold silver ratio, it is literally just the price that one would pay for either one ounce of gold or the equivalent amount of ounces uh, of silver with the same amount of money. And it's a really interesting barometer of where prices should, or where, where one should perhaps think about putting one's money if you are looking at getting hold of any particular type of metal. And back then, when it was 120 ounces of silver compared with one ounce of gold, that was the time to buy some silver. Goodness me, silver was cheap. You could play the ratio, which is a very, very interesting concept. Uh, and I will be talking about that in a little bit more depth in the second part of this video, whether or not it's even a practical thing. But back then, you could buy 120 ounces of silver for the equivalent of an, an ounce of gold. And now, now the ratio is around 65 to one. So you could almost double up the amount of gold that you could have got. Now, in real terms, that's not always as simple as you might think, because there is, of course, premium on top of silver. There's even premium on top of gold. Uh, it's smaller by a uh, I mean, significant margin, of course, but still there is the premium to factor in. But the premium on the silver does not yield you that same ratio. So it is always important to remember that. The gold-silver ratio is a barometer, yes, but the premiums at the moment are another barometer of perhaps what is a slightly better buy. Now, I do want to point out this is not a financial advice video. You know, any financial decisions you make having watched this video are yours, and, are yours and yours alone. But I look at the ratios right now with silver being in the 60s to one, but if you take the premiums that dealers are charging for, uh, for silver right now, for this wonderful, lovely white metal, and you compare that with gold, the actual ratio is more like 45 to one. And 40 to one, 45 to one, that's the kind of magic ratio number that a lot of people have said that silver and gold should really be at in this modern times. You will and maybe have heard a lot of other people talking about how the gold-silver ratio should be 16 to one, or it should be eight to one, because that's the ratio at which it comes out of the ground. That's not really how 
the modern world works. Now, there's loads of different reasons why the different ratios are higher. Industrial use and demand has, of course, changed significantly. You know, back in the days of those 16 to 1, 8 to 1 numbers, the world was very different. Technology was very different. There was not a great deal of silver used within industry. But now, of course, there is a very, very significant portion of silver used within industry. So that whole argument that it should go back down to 16 to 1, 8 to 1, is, in my opinion, a bit of an old-fashioned one. Uh, I also think with the sheer number of people in the world, the sheer number of uh, required fiat dollars for us all to kind of live and cope, uh, that having those ratios down at those levels needs some fundamental shift in the way that we interact with currency, whether that will come from cryptos down the line. Uh, I don't know, but perhaps it will. So those historic ratios are, in my opinion, not going to come back ever again. And what I guess I'm trying to get at is that the the ratio right now sitting at the you know the sort of 16 uh, sorry the, the 46 to 1 in that kind of premium bracket you know it's more here in the United Kingdom because we've got the the joys of VAT and taxes to add on top of things but if you take the average on the second hand market on you know US dealers websites and things like that roughly 45 to 50 to 1 at the moment that is a pretty low ratio certainly compared with what it was just even a year ago, not even two years ago when it was sort of in the 80s and creeping up, creeping up 90s. That is a very significant difference. And for me anyway, it says in my mind that gold is the better buy right now. Silver is more expensive relative to gold. Now, the ultimate question is going to be how much more growth is there going to be in silver? Is it going to be a case that silver is going to stay stagnant and perhaps gold prices are going to come down? We did see a drop in gold prices and of course silver has still kept a certain level above where it was a few weeks ago before the whole silver squeeze and GameStop thing was actually uh, you know, a real thing to sort of concern ourselves with. But the big thing is the premiums. The premiums on physical silver right now are undoubtedly high and that really does have an effect on a lot of people's buying decisions. Now, I personally am very much a risk adverse type of person and I do view silver right now as a more risky investment, as a more risky buy than gold would be. Uh, and that's just down to the premiums that are attached to it from dealers or even just on the second hand market. You know, right now we're seeing huge prices for single ounces of silver on eBay. Um, you know, just even Facebook sales and, and lots of people out there that are new to metals that don't necessarily know the full ins and outs of the market are paying considerably over the odds for their metals. Now, even if you buy responsibly from good sources, you are going to be paying significantly higher premiums over spot price than you are unless you were buying gold. And for me, that lack of risk in gold relative to the lack or to relative to the high levels of perceived risk in my mind anyway to silver means that I think gold is the better buy right now. Certainly when you look at the prices relative to this time last year, um, you know, gold definitely does seem an interesting price point for sure uh, compared with what silver was last year. And then you take into account the huge drop that happened with the uh, with the silver price in March last year. And you've only then got to sort of say to yourself, well, yeah, in terms of relative short term, you know, talking over the next couple of months and week, uh, weeks, months and one year, there is more security in buying gold if you had to go and sell. Uh, my advice has always been to people, if you are going to be getting into um, precious metals, to do so debt-free, to do so without having, um, you know, sort of the requirement to sell it quickly. That is when you're going to get into most trouble. So lots of really interesting things to think about. Gold definitely yields a lot of good protection for that. But there is, of course, this whole sentiment right now that silver is great. Silver is the bee's knees. It is the thing to get. And if you have not got it, you are going to regret not having it. Uh, now, for sure, there's definitely some advantages to having silver in the long run. If we're talking purely the gold to silver ratio and you want to play the ratio, then I would say right now the time is to buy gold and look to trade it up when that ratio starts extending again. However, there are significant number of arguments to say that it won't go back to those 100 to 1 ratios that we've seen before. But it's not impossible that it won't. There are plenty of big world events that could still happen that we would then see these price drops and price changes for gold or silver. So 
lots of really interesting things to think about. Now, the second part of this video, I want to talk specifically about that ratio. If now is the time to buy gold, specifically to trade it up for silver at a later date, is that even a thing? Can you even do that? I have seen countless videos talking about the gold and silver ratio. I remember them all the way back when I got started. And it's a really interesting metric that you can actually use to extend your wealth with or extend the amount of metals you have and thereby your wealth without actually having to spend more capital on it. So let's just say right now you've got a budget of $1,500. Let's keep it in dollars because dollars is uh, the way the world works at the moment with precious metals. And you want to buy some metals. You could buy an ounce of gold or you could buy, I don't know what the premiums would be, something like 55, 50 ounces of silver. Great. Okay. So you could have that. And then let's say in <clears throat> a year's time, the gold, gold silver ratio has gone up to 100 to 1 again. Could you take that single ounce of gold and trade it for 100 ounces of silver? The honest and short answer is no. You would not be able to. The ratio doesn't work like that. And in addition, you will be very hard pressed to find dealers out there that will just simply do a swap for a swap. A lot of smaller coin shops might be entertaining certain things like that, um, but in general, most dealers won't do that just simply because of accounting purposes. They will have to account for various trades if they do that. It's not just, you know, if they do it backhand, you know, under the counter type situation, then that's not really technically good if they don't report it it's technically illegal it's fraud if they don't actually report it on their books and um, so there's definitely things to consider and factor in about that and um, the premium again though is the thing that really is going to be the unknowns about that now there is no doubt that if the silver gold ratio popped back up to 100 to 1 you'd certainly be able to take those 55 ounces of silver that you bought or you know one ounce of gold and trade it into more silver than you could have bought at that time so it's very much a long-term game now I was asked this question by a follower on Instagram about whether or not the ratio is playable, whether it is possible to do. Uh, I have had a couple of experiences doing it, and what we did at the time was to do a trade based on uh, the lowest prices that we could find on various different dealer websites for those two items. We just then used those as the ratio prices. So it's definitely possible to do on the second-hand market and the secondary sort of you know places like the Silver Forum. This was with a Silver Forum member. So it is most certainly possible and it is most certainly practical to trade it uh, for more metal. However, from my perspective, I think that honestly, holding your silver right now, holding your gold right now is the most important thing. And if you had bought a very large pile of silver back last year when it was, um, you know, the, the 100, to, 100 to 1 plus ratio, is now the time to be selling all your silver to accumulate gold? Probably not. In all honesty, if you've got silver right now, you should be holding it. You should keep all the silver that you can possibly get your hands on right now because it is undoubtedly going to yield more benefit over time. Certainly right now, there are a lot of interesting factors at play around premiums, about supply of physical. It's not impossible to get physical. Don't let anybody tell you that. There are plenty of dealers out there selling plenty of silver, and there will be for a significant amount of time into the future. But the premiums are going up. So if you've got your silver right now, my advice is to not bother playing the ratio simply because by the time it comes to uh, getting that ratio on the other end of the stick to get back your silver, to have accumulated more silver by trading to gold and then back to silver, you're probably not going to actually yield much benefit. And it just puts all of this additional burden and risk on your trades and on everything that you're doing with it. So in my opinion, the gold silver ratio right now is something of a myth to actually use. Is it still though a barometer for new buyers? I think yes, and I think most certainly for new buyers out there who want to get into metals generally, it's expensive to do so in silver right now, it really is. And we can say that with, I think, a good degree of certainty based on the historic ratios of gold and silver. Of course, we are living in unprecedented times, uncertain world and just general unknowns about the future, about vaccines. But, you know, we hear, we keep hearing mixed messages about this because there are positive news articles all over the place about the vaccines, about how their rollout is going really well. But then there are all these new variants and we don't quite know the future of these variants and whether or not that will hinder things. So at some point, you know, economies are going to kick into overdrive. There's going to be recoveries. There's going to be economic recoveries, not just in metals. And when 
the big players out there, the big investors out there, think that the time is right to come out of certain safe haven assets like gold and silver, they will look then to put their money into something else. They'll flood the market with lots of silver. There'll be lots of demand. The price will drop. And then, who knows? Silver's always the first to go from those things as well. It's a whole video for another separate time, uh, as we are running a little long on this video already. But hedge funds, Wall Street bankers, big investors, if they have silver and they have gold, they will get rid of their silver first by streets and miles before they get rid of their gold. Gold is the safe haven. It is the thing that is the stability of your wealth and silver is the poor man's child that always gets thrown out to the wolves first so that is definitely something to factor in so that is my thoughts on the gold silver ratio as it stands right now where we are uh, for me it's very much about the accumulation of more gold right now if i see spot price gold i'm lapping it up if i can if i see spot price silver i'm still somewhat slightly um you know sort of hesitant to almost go out and buy large quantities of it. I think that the price point that we're seeing right now is a little bit inflated. The premiums are the thing that kill me. So perhaps if I did see spot price silver, it would be more attractive. But if given the choice of spot price gold or spot price silver right now, I would take spot price gold every time. But then that's just my thoughts and opinions on the subject. I would love to know what yours are. It's one of the reasons why I make these style of videos. So please make sure that you share your thoughts and opinions down in that comment section. I know a lot of new and seasoned stackers alike will actually get a lot of value from reading what you might think. If you've enjoyed this, th this video and this ramble about precious metals and the silver and gold ratio, then hit that thumbs up button. It really would help everything that we do here on our channel. And if you have not already joined in our 30,000 subscriber giveaway for the chance to win, I should have probably got this out on the table sooner. There we go. For the chance to win our 300 gram, 30,000 sub silver puck, then make sure that you go and check out our giveaway video. There's a link down in the description below. Otherwise, that is it from me. Have a fantastic week ahead. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. We'll see you on the next one. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.